You can do the tweets and things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Tell me we're not on it. So YouTube. Your links are out. Give me a gift. Accurate. All right, well, I see us online. Looks like Mixer's not working. Uh oh. I have to reauthorize. Mm. Which is lame. I agree. It happens every so often. Certification expires. Yeah, but I ch and it's probably because we're alive right now. I tried to reconnect and it won't reconnect. Oh well. The mixer folks can go to YouTube or Periscope or. What? Mm, my neck cracked like four places. That felt amazing. Nice. Okay. Do you have Audacity ready? Yup. I do. <clears throat> okay. All right. Three, yeah. two, one, record. Three, two, one mark. mark. Greetings, Kooplings, and welcome back to the Nintendo Shack. My name is Donnie, and tonight we record episode 99 of the Nintendo Shack podcast, your weekly dose of Nintendo nostalgia. Hey, guys, we miss you over Hi. here on the PSVG podcast network. Yep, we're just one away from the big one. Oh, oh, the big 100. We've got uh, special guests lined up for next week, and some of you already know, some of our most active listeners know, what we have planned for the week after. Yeah. Maybe a little reunion of sorts. Don't spoil it. Joining in the co-host chair is the Nintendame, Caroline. What's up, girl? What up? I'm not going to rag on you this week. Nice haircut. Oh, you like that? Yeah. I had to go talk to the Boy Scouts this week and go teach <laughs> little kids about... That's your reason for getting a haircut. It is. Yeah, I can't I have, can't go all bushy-haired and stuff. County managers, mayors and stuff, they don't like that. They don't like the shag hair at all. That's a no-go. Real okay. quick. And if you're taking pictures and stuff, mm -mm, they don't want to see that. It's like a military thing or something, I think. How much do you care about that kind of stuff? Well, I mean, I care about keeping my job in good status. I suppose. So... Um, we took the week off, digits. Uh, hopefully to play some things. Caroline, what have you been playing? I've been playing Astral Chain. I haven't spoken about Astral Chain since we've been... At all, really. With... All right, so no, listen, like it came out late August. We're in the middle of September now. We had our direct, then we had our interview Pear with Snyder. Pear. Yeah. You still believe and... that happened? It's kind of crazy. <laughs> um and then last week, you and Kaiju talked about it, but I hadn't really played it as much. Come to find out, I actually was in the same spot as Kaiju was. Yeah. Um, I've gotten to file 10, almost completed file mm. 10, and I was, thought there were 11 files and I was going to be able to finish it on stream tomorrow, but there are 12. Uh, so I'm probably not going to finish it before Link's Awakening on Friday because if you're listening on Friday, yes, that's Friday the 20th day that's coming out. I'm taking all day off. Come by my stream. Hang out. Um, I'm going to be diving back into Coholent. So, also, I had Canadian FOMO. Do you know what that is? Is that like, a, is that like something you pick up like on toilet seats or something? <laughs> I had Canadian FOMO because, um, you know, Sean Capri and, and all these other people. It's saying, me, Sean Capri. Sort of. But, but no, I, I, wasn't, I wasn't 
feeling left out from that. It's just, I was feeling left out because they have this thing called like 7-Eleven that we don't have. And um, they have these three. Well, we have 7-Elevens, but we don't have the things that they have. Yeah. This is true, but I don't know if it's 7-Eleven around Georgia. Oh, yeah. We've got to have 7-Eleven. Really? Yeah. yeah, Okay. It's got to be around somewhere. Canadians got a very interesting promotional material. They got three different Slurpee cups from Link's Awakening, the new Link's Awakening that are coming out. And you bought them for $50 each. Look at you. No, no. (laughs) These were 15, so they were like $5 a piece. No, 15 total. Oh, okay. That's not so Um, bad. And what's funny is today I got I got the um, I got the box and it showed that it was from Montana. I was like, "What? These are coming from Canada!" And then I was like, "Oh, that woman was smart. She went over the border. Heck yeah, she knew what she was doing." So uh, I have adorable. Did you get them uh, eBay? Very, very large. Yes, eBay. I was There's thinking about getting some. I, I, I to be honest with you, I was half expecting Sean to just send me some. I was half expecting oh. just to have like a package in the mail. It's like, hey, Donnie, you're awesome. Here's some cups, but. He doesn't you like love him? you that much. I, I mean, come know. on. Anyway, I love the one with Link and Marin. I think it's just the cutest. Uh, Target is actually getting a really interesting incentive. If you go and buy it in store on Friday, you get a Link and Marin pen set. It's kind of a crappy, uh, not so quality enamel pen set. It's just like they printed it on a piece of plastic and put a backing on it. Sure. It's not great. So uh, I've been playing Astral Chain. I uh, very much appreciate the rescuing cats. That is mm-hmm. far none the best part of the game no, for it's me. Not. How much? How many cats do you have? I've got to go back because what I did was uh, there are some areas in the beginning that you cannot access until you have the other legions. Right. I have all five legions at this point. I'm pretty much at end game, and. I haven't gone back to the other files to go get the other cats. Okay. So I will do that, but I was waiting until I got all five of them. But now I'm on a rush to try and beat it before Link's Awakening comes You didn't sell your up. cat food, did you? I'm not help. No, I have not. Good. Got to gotta have the cat food to get the cat. Yep. Uh, um, at least a couple of them. You got to do chapter 11 before you start the new game. Because chapter 12 is not like really game. Chapter 12 is like in It's like extra game. Chapter 11 oh, really? is game. That's in game. That's campaign. Oh, okay. Roll credits. That's the game. So oh, do okay. chapter 11 tomorrow, and you'll be all set for Zelda. Okay. I thought there were 12 files, though. There are 12 files, but the 12th file isn't the campaign. I see. It's extra stuff. It's cleanup. It's extra challenges. That's why I didn't do it. I didn't do it. Ah. Because yeah, it's not, it's not part of the game. It. Can't believe you. Um, why? On, on top of that, I really like, I, I really like trying to find a toilet. <laughs> it's fun? <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's... um. So my favorite f- three things about the game, like just combat is one thing. Like I, I enjoy Bayonetta for the, it, it's it's a hack and slash, but I don't feel like I have to try with combat. Astral Chain is very much the same way. I just am kind of like, yeah, I'm shooting and I'm changing my targets and you know, I know what I'm doing. There are some frustrating enemies, like the ones that get shielded by the little creatures and you have to yeah. kill the little creatures first. How about like when they're way up in the air? <laughs> yeah, I've gotten used to that, though, really quick. Like, the one that you have to dig up with the Beast Legion is really annoying, but I figured it out. Uh, so my three favorite things are finding the cats, finding the toilets, and then collecting red matter. Uh, yeah. If I get, like, all the red matter, I'm like, oh, i got to collect sure. it, i got to collect it. Are you doing all the cases in every file? I am trying, but there's a lot that I'm missing. There's a lot. And, I, and, I'm, and I'm looking at it, and I'm like, where did those even show up on my yeah. map? Because I was looking and I, you must have to, you yeah. know, specially. Exactly. Go and you got to do one to unlock the other to get the other. Right. So uh, I am going to go back and try and do all the case files, but. Oh, not you're not a real thing. gamer. You don't play all game. Ugh. I'm just saying I want to try and like 100% it. I did them as all. I can. As I said, I did them all until chapter eight. I missed a couple mm-hmm. and then I just quit trying. <laughs> I okay. was like, I'm not going to go back. I'm just going to keep going. I really enjoy it. Uh, it's a great game. It's, it's been a nice game to sort of go past the month. Uh, it kind of snuck up on me really quickly because I've been juggling that and WoW at the same time. So <laughs> now Link's Awakening is here and it's going to be bye-bye to something. But I think Link's Awakening is so short that I'm probably going to beat it within a week. I think I'm going to beat it this weekend. Probably. Yeah, because I'm going to play it a lot this weekend. No- Notre Dame game, though, so I probably won't be playing Yeah, we're playing Miami of Ohio. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I'm probably not even going to watch. I'll just play Link's Awakening. Instead. Ours is the hottest game of, like, ever. Of ever? Their tickets selling for Nobody $500. Nobody cares. You're going to stomp Notre Dame. It's a garbage game. 
Notre Dame is such an overrated. Like that's the so we've never had them. That's this is the, the third perfect time out of conference opponent for any any team of merit to ever schedule is Notre Dame. Right. We're talking. We're talking football for those of you guys that don't know NCAA football. Bring it back. Bring it back. Right? Bring it back. Um, yeah. So I'm going to be busy Saturday, and it's Do you probably have any not going to happen until late Sunday. How excited I would be to see an announcement for an NCAA football game. I know it's no, no, no. I don't think you know. Like <laughs> no more heroes three. Like I might cry. I would scream. I would run around. Nice would shirt, be so by excited. the way. Where'd you get that shirt? Oh yeah. You like that? No More Heroes. He's wearing a No More Heroes shirt, guys. It's the Joy Division thing that Suda's been wearing around Gamescom and stuff. Oh, yeah. So he has these special shirts that they did at a promo event in Japan, uh, like a book signing. that He's been wearing at, like, PAX and Gamescom. Yeah. And I saw the shirt. It's Joy Division's album, if you've never listened to, like, a punk band. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, I've got to get one of those shirts. And if you go to his Twitter profile, every time he takes a selfie in it, if you click on the comments, 70 comments, people ask, where where do I buy this shirt? The Grasshopper. (laughs) Where do I buy the shirt? And I think it's because it's like, it's not the album cover. It's the No More Heroes star, like Broken mm-hmm. Star in the album right. cover. Right. I think it's um, because of it's like a maybe a license thing. I don't know. They're not selling them. Like, they're not for sale. Mm. Somebody, though, has has okay, is, is selling it and uh, mm. in, in Europe. And I bought two of them. I was like, yeah, I need the shirt. <laughs> one to wear and one to keep. Yep, yep. It, when it goes well with my new my new canvas wall and all the prints and stuff. But uh, mm-hmm. pretty, pretty, yeah, good stuff. Same to like your asshole chain. No more heroes. Got to gotta go save the game in the toilet. So it's good stuff. Really? There's toilet stuff and no more heroes. Yeah, that's how you that's save. Surprising. Every one of them, that's how you save. Oh, interesting. You go to the John and he, like, he, he, he drops his pants and he sits down and then the saving menu comes up kind of over his groin area. So you see like his knees and you see like his face. And sometimes you like pull out like a magazine. It's very like jackass humor type of oh, stuff. Sure. Yeah. 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 Good stuff. That's it. Astral Chain. Astral Chain's great. Astral is Train good. is great. I got a question after the show um, from Isaac. I got one in, in that we're going to talk about here later, but I got mm-hmm. one after the show where he was asking me if I liked it more than Devil May Cry 5. And then he also asked me, or I don't, then I was thought of like, I wonder if I like it more than Fire Emblem Three Houses. Oh boy. So I don't know. I had to think about it, but coming down to the end here, because I, I really did. I mean. Speaking of, Brian beat Fire Emblem. Oh, wow. Did he take he a separate did. path in you or did he just do his, he did the Edelgard oh, no. straight path. He, and now he's playing it again on maddening mode. Wow. That's impressive. Classic. He's he died like twice in the first battle. He's like, wow. well, I was kind of being stupid, but new game plus kind of hijacks the game. It, it just really makes it a lot easier. Uh, so he is, he, he was very kind of, what do I do now that I've beaten it? And two days later, he's like, I want to start a maddening playthrough. I was like, okay, you go right on ahead. Okay. Um, myself, I've been bouncing around. So I play creature in the well. Mm-hmm. Which is this really cool game? It's it was been described in like the whole I guess headline that goes with the game is it's a dungeon crawling hack and slash pinball game. That's right. like the elevator pitch that everybody gets. It's got a really cool art style. Very, it's like Void Bastards. Like what that game looked like. It looks a lot like that. Um, just like really neon colors, lots of contrasting colors. You know, simple design, but but bright. And, and crisp, you know, sharp. I remember the trailer. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. really, really nice. I don't like it as much. I don't like mm. it as much as I feel like a lot of people are. Um, but I say that as I don't think it's, I think I definitely think it's me. It's not the game. I think the game is great. I just don't think I'm into this type of game. It, it's very, it, this frustrates me greatly. And and that, that's, that's kind of it. It's hard. It's really short. It's like Ape Out. I believe you can beat this game in like three hours. When I oh, hear wow. on podcasts How and stuff, like fourteen dollars. What? And so one of the upsetting things I think, and and I, I don't know how to, I like how to maybe identify this and recognize it, and then maybe extract it. But it launched on Game Pass, and I just didn't know about it, mm. so I bought it on Switch, and oh. I think there's some resentment there, even oh. like subconsciously, maybe. like I'm a little upset that I even bought it because oh, I didn't well. have to. Um, but I did, and it's it's not again. It's not that it's bad. I wish I could give this game. If I could give this game to, to Jason, I think he'd love it. Sure. Um, it's just it's hard, and uh, it's not like super hard. It's not. 
I never felt like I couldn't do it. But it's frustrating because mm-hmm. you die and it kicks you all the way back to the beginning. And you got to go and walk yourself all the way back. Now, that's a little misleading because there's like these gates that you can kind of like skip halfway there. But you got to go all the way back. Um, it's a fun game. So you're a robot. You have two swords. And when you walk into the room, like these turrets shoot little balls at you. And if you slash them with the charge sword, then you basically take control of the, of the ball. And you mm-hmm. charge it. You keep slashing. You charge the ball. And you can have two, three, four. You can put them all together. And then you have another button or another sword. So, like, they're mapped to two different buttons. And your other sword actually knocks the balls away from you. Mm. And you've got to knock them into bumpers and, uh, you know, like little bumpers and and rails. Mm -hmm. Pinball. And they bounce off of it. And then uh, they basically set up a bunch of stuff off of this. So, the idea is um, you charge the ball with power. You throw it into the bumper. The bumpers take so much power to unlock or disengage. And then you do that and you keep earning more power. And when you unlock the room, you should have enough power to then unlock the door, go to the next room, and do it again. It gets a little weird or it gets harder because you get into some rooms where they start throwing enemies at you. Like, well, enemies is not really where where, where, where they start sending you like projectiles that you can't hit. Mm. You can hit the ball into them to clear them, but you can't hit them. And if they hit you, you know, you take damage. Or they have certain kind of bumpers that are marked where they're red. And if you hit them, then they have like big explosion radiuses that you can't be in. Right. Or they have lanes where the entire lane of the level will, you know, like a, a, a path will light up and you can't be on that path. Mm-hmm. And then they may have multiple paths where they do like a star or an asterisk or a plus or a cross, you know, like they'll do all this. And then you start getting into rooms where they start doing all of it at the same time. Oh, great. And <laughs> I probably played this game for four or five hours. I thought mm-hmm. I was almost done. Like, so the idea is um, you unlock like, like this pillar. There's like this, I forget what it's called. I think it's called a monolith, but it's like a tower, like a pillar. You unlock it. Basically pillars. And you when you unlock one, it unlocks that world and you walk through the door and you get transported to this world and you do that dungeon. And right. then you come back and you unlock another one, come back. So when you first walk into this room, like early in the game, there's like five. You, it looks like there's like five spaces. You're like, there's five. I think I got to the point where I had three or four of the five. I was like, I'm almost done. And then I got to the point where like like smaller, like offset pillars came. And I was oh. like, I'm not almost done. I thought I was almost done. I was not almost done. And I've been tweeting and chatting to Jared about it a little bit. I listened to the Kind of Funny podcast where Andrea talked about how she had just completed this game. And they went through a segment in this discussion where they talked about how brutally hard the end was. Like, the ending was just awful. Not a dining game. So I went and looked it up on YouTube instead of King. Because like, even, even when I was doing well, I was even like even early on when I first played the game, I've got tweets to Jared where I'm like, I'm just not really like feeling it. Like, you know, whether I wanted to play something else, whether it's because I'm a little upset that I bought the game. I just, I'm not like having a lot of fun. It's more frustrating than fun. Yeah. Even like at the easier levels, you know, like even when I'm not frustrated, I'm just like, "Eh." I mean, I get it. It's pinball. I think that's a part of it. I'm not like super into this idea because like some of, okay. So some of the, the mechanics that you have to do are just weird. So it's not just like, break all the bumpers and go on. Some of them you have to like hit all the bumpers within a certain time. And I'm not talking like hit them all within a minute. I'm talking there might be four or six bumpers that you have to hit them all within a second, which basically means you have to hit That's one dumb. shot where it bounces off perfectly off of all four or all six or yeah. all eight. And it's just like, that's, that's tedious. Yeah. You know, it's like, come on, who cares? Like, let me hit the bumpers. You know, like maybe make that an extra, like that's a bonus, but it's not, you've got to do it to clear the level. Um, Hard mode and, of the game. And then there's others where you have to you have to hit the ball and it has to go on a certain angle and a path to hit all of the lights in a row. And mm. if you if you're a degree off, you only hit three of the six or five of the six. And you, it's just a lot of repetition. It's a lot of okay. keep doing it until you do it just just perfectly. Um but I went to YouTube and I watched the last little run. And it's basically like a bullet hell where all kinds of stuff are flying at you. And you've got to, like, build your own path to walk across. You can fall. And I was like, I'm done with this game. (laughs) This is where I'm no longer interested in playing this game anymore. 
So in true Donnie fashion, I started playing Super Kirby Clash, which is a free to play game. Is it nice and easy and cute? It's super easy and cute. Um, it is very much like Pokemon Quest. You were spot on with that. Not in the nice. sense of the mechanics, but in the sense of the game isn't beating the boss. The game is managing your inventory and check-in and resources to get the stuff to beat the mm -hmm. boss. That's the game. Yeah. Um, I wanted to play it just because I wanted to talk about it on the podcast. So I started playing it. And then like two hours went by and I was still playing. And I was like, wow, kind of enjoying playing this game. Oh, that's I good. I threw my gold coins at it. I had two dollars of gold coins. I gave it two dollars of gold coins. Got some apples. Got some swords. Got some helmets. Called some friends. It has a cool uh, um, amiibo. So it is Ooh. one of those games that has multiple currencies, but they're not too bad. I, I haven't not come across the point that they're too bad that I haven't. I felt confused. Mm -hmm. Basically, the only currency you can buy are apples, and then you use apples to either unlock quests or to buy things in the store. But certain things in the store require that you have certain amount of materials, which your uh -huh. amiibo cards will give you. So uh -huh. Jack and I have very much been enjoying just scanning Our our amiibo things. Yeah, exactly. And uh, we've been playing a little co-op and playing myself, and it's just kind of mindless, uh, but cool. free. You know, we didn't pay anything for it, and I, I kind of like it. Um, I finished the Mario Maker 2 campaign, finally. It's nice. like the game I've just been playing in between playing other things. Mm -hmm. Sat down and finally finished that off. Um, still playing Mario Maker. I still love Mario Maker. It feels like all of the buzz has died off for good reason. I mean, Astral Chain and right, Damon right, X right. Maka. There's a lot of things coming out, but uh, Mario Maker 2 is good. It's really, mm -hmm. really good. I, I am enjoying it. Um, it's on my list still. When I, so even, every time I jump back in, whether I'm playing Friends Levels or playing the campaign. Every time I hit one of those 3D world, I just I keep I'm like, man, I want a whole 3D, 2D world game. I want a 2D game made of 3D world stuff. Mm. And I actually wish it was that Nintendo dumb, like that num dumb name. I want it to be called, you know, Mario Super 2D, 3D, 3D world. Mario World in 2D or something like that. Oh. New 3D Super 2D. Something You're being brainwashed. Dumb. Oh man, it's so good. Those are great. Those are great levels. We just really need the port of 3D World. We do. We need the 3D much. World. And it was it's really fun. So I, I finished that off. Um, and just to kind of close this out here, I downloaded the Contra demo because it's like shooter game. Mm. That's awful. Yeah. It's it's real bad. It's awful bad. It's, Contra games haven't been good, in my opinion, since like Super Contra. It's a twin stick shooter, which I, I actually like. These are mm -hmm. hashtag Tony games. I love a good twin stick shooter. This is just not good. Mm. Um. It is fuzzy and low res as can be. Like the character model, it just looks like a smudge. When you're yeah. playing in portable, it's just like, uh, it's almost pixelated. You're just like, what? what is this? Mm -hmm. And then the whole level is kind of like fuzzy, which is fine. I don't want to like kill it, you know, something like that, just over something like that. But um, then you start jumping around in the mechanics and they don't feel like a twin stick shooter mechanically should feel. It's just not all, like if you've played games like this, it's not all up to it's not Dead Nation. Yeah, you know, I prefer old school Machina, Contra. It's, it's not good. So, um, and then once I kind of cleared that, and once I beat Gears, like so, I have beat Gears. I'm not going to talk about Gears here, obviously, but right, that's what right. I've been playing. I've been playing Gears and some Xbox stuff. Once I got like Mario Maker and Super Kirby Clash done, I started putting some actual time into Dragon Quest XI. I thought maybe I could get some time in and uh, shave off a little time before it drops and here in a couple of weeks before um, Zelda comes. Uh -huh. So I've been playing that. I enjoy the experience much better docked. This is like a Zelda Breath of the Wild territory where the portable experience is playable, like it's fine, but it's just not good. It's not on, See, it's, not, it's not nearly as good or on am par. I the, am I the only one that's excited about like the fact that you can just 2D it? I love the sprite idea. Like, the sprites on portable will probably be the w way that I play the so most. That's what I was going to say. I mean, I told you that I was never going to play it that way, but if I'm playing it portably, I might. I, mm -hmm. I might just kick over to that pixel mode. I love and that play look. It like that. Because, uh, like, the, the world, like I said, it doesn't look bad. It's just not, it's just fuzzy. It's not that sharp. It's not that bright. It just loses a lot. It's, still it's a, a really pretty game. It's a dock, though. It's a big downgrade from the dock. That's what I I'm think. trying to say. And if it was closer, I wouldn't mind it so much. It's just a big drop off. Mm -hmm. Whereas docked, it's much more vibrant, it's brighter, it's, it's better. Um, but playing it to Octum when I got kind of got through and I, I enjoy it. I, I like it a lot. Um, so before we jump into some news, and we've got a bunch of news and we've got a bunch of questions. For those of you who don't follow us over on Twitter at Shack Life, um, I had a three month Nintendo Switch online code that I got for buying <laughs> Overwatch, which I gave away for the last three days. I've been pumping out tweets. If you just send us a question, 
he could he uh, pick a winner and that's what we got so we got like 30 questions we had tons of mm-hmm. questions great fantastic thank you so much but before we get into the news i do want to thank our patreon producers which we skipped over in the intro so thanks uh <laughs> Callow, barry josh chris Devin, kyle benji paul and the professor joel thank you guys so much for supporting us over there at patreon.com slash or what is it yeah that's right patreon.com slash psvg P- haven't done it in a week i'm off a week a little, right a little, a little rusty <laughs> um let's get into some news so we have a lot of news that we didn't cover last week which was covered over there on the psvg prime show most notably the ring fit adventure game mm. so this is the thing that has the 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 ring the band i don't even know what you call it <laughs> the circle those ring thing that you hold and then it's got a, a band that you strap to your leg so this this ain't it chief oh you this don't think so this ain't for me. I mean, it's not for me. This is, let's see what we can do to bring physical fitness back into it without the Wii balance board, guys. Uh, did you, Okay, uh, so Carly hours? asked what we thought of it. Do you Did you watch any of the coverage for it? Or did you it just was, see it and you were like, no? The people that were in the video kind of like Everybody's freaked me out. They're kind of scary. Yeah. <laughs> It was not the best like advertising that they could have done. They were kind of like, um, they were like joyfully. It seemed yeah. like, they, yeah, yeah, it was like creepily too happy. Like, we want you to be like yeah. really in pain while you're doing this, guys. <laughs> yeah, it's just, ugh. don't put people in this thing, like especially randos that we're never going to see again. They now, learned their about- lesson with the Nindies, right? They didn't put the people well, that's in there. That's true. That's true. But what about the game itself? Eh. Really? It looks it looks interesting, but anything if I've got to do like something gimmicky, you got to move in order to play it. Like it, it, the, it's just not cool to me. Like Wii Mote and motion control was so seamless to me, and I was like, that's cool, you know. But Xbox Connect, where your whole body is the controller, is just so gimmicky to me. Hmm. So this is this is kind of gimmicky. I kind of like it. Of course you do. Um, <laughs> my immediate take from the gameplay was that it was Metopia. It's basically like Metopia meets Connect Adventures. That is basically mm, I, what the game. I is. see the Metopia. Because yeah, because it's all there. So it's it's an RPG. Like so, you you basically walk this board, and you drop into this level where you have to do some sort of exercise using one of mm-hmm. these peripherals, <sighs> and uh, and then like you level up to go do the next one, the next one, like Metopia. I think I'm. I'm jaded about it because I hate exercising. I loathe it. I loathe even getting on the stationary bike upstairs. My problem with it, I think it's twice the price it should be. Twice. Oh, God. It's twice. 80 is insane. $80 is insane for a little rubber ring and a little strap that you strap to your leg. If it came with the Joy-Con, maybe. Like if they did like a Wii Party thing with it and the Joy-Con was uh-huh. included, okay. But I, I guess that they're, I guess that they're like their push is that it's a full game. And I actually, there's a part of me that kind of believes in the game. The game might be good. In terms of like a fitness type of game, this might be the best that they've ever tried. And I mean, when I say they, I actually mean like video games as a whole, like everybody ever. Um, It really seems like this game has a lot of polish into it. At least at face value. We don't know. We haven't seen it. But at face value, what they showed, a little bit more than like your little tech demo, faceless type of character fitness game that we've seen in the past. Yes. Um, I bet. (laughs) We got to try it somehow. I bet my wife I and Melissa, or I mean, my wife and Melissa, I believe uh, Melissa and my daughter would probably really like this. I haven't shown it them commercially yet, but. Okay. We had the Wii Fit and the Wii Fit U. Um, matter of fact, right here in my little jar of stuff, there's my pedometer. Nice. So um, we've done this stuff before. I, I, I'm, I'm happy that they haven't given up on this because I, as much as it is a gimmick and as much as it's not for the core gamer, we don't want to do this. Um, I think there is a market for this, and I think it exists. There's absolutely a market absolutely for market. it. Um, yeah. Like, connected um, well when they had, like, the P90X and exercise stuff. Yeah. Not the adventure games, not the stuff they had rare do, but the actual fitness apps did right. well. So I think there's a market for this, and I think that's cool. I think the most exercise I ever got out of a game was when the Michael Jackson The Experience came out, and go. I was, dude, man, that was rough. We have Just that Dance on nice. Switch. Um we, you know, we've got Rock Band. I, I like peripherals and I, we got all the Labo, you know, like I got actually mm-hmm. excited when Lucas talked about using the Labo VR plus the, the, the band around your leg and stuff. I was like, that mm. sounds awesome. And then they made fun of it. And I was like, oh, I, I was actually kind of excited. 
<laughs> I was like, what a I could do it. I was like, what a, what great I was like, what what great um like thoughts and analysis. What a great expert analysis. He was like, I'm joking. What an awful idea. I was like, oh <gasps> never mind. It's just womp, me. Womp. Womp, womp. It's where you place the prices right noise. Do, 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 the do, problem do. is that it's 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 twice what it should be. Like even if I was to use your gamers club, I still it's still too much. If you're like Donnie, we'll give it to you for sixty. I'm like, I ain't buying this until you it's get like, this to $30. like thirty-five and yeah. maybe, maybe, and that's if it reviews well, like on top of it. Uh-huh. Um, but yeah, that's that's my only issue with it. Anyway. Is this Nintendo developed and yeah. produced? Mm. Oh, great! I have to own it. <laughs> According to my own like set rules, I have to own it. Are you interested at all? Like when previews and stuff come out, are you going to watch any or listen to, it or you just don't care? Because I, I, I have questions. Like, I want to know how much resistance is on the band. You know, like, I want to, like, I've got questions. I'm like, is it, like, is it for real, I mean, real or is it, like, All I can think is the lame. reason that it's an $80 price point is the composite material of the ring is, like, legit. Because when you like, saw them in the commercial and they were squeezing it, you know, I know yeah. that they were acting, but they looked like they had to try. And I was like, I guess. maybe it is, like, something. Maybe they, they Maybe there's something to it. I don't know. Resistance bands are not cheap in the medical field, so right. maybe it's like official. And it looked like quality. It didn't, you know, it's not like some Velcro yeah. strap thing. Anyway. We'll see. Caroline, SNES controllers went on sale on Monday for Nintendo Switch yes, online did. subscribers, and they were promptly out of stock within the hour. I luckily got notification from you and pre-ordered two. So I messaged everybody, and then I messaged you. I texted you directly. And Rebecca goes, I am about to leave work. Should I get one now? And I was like, I think if you want one, you should get one while it's available. And she was like, but do you think people are going to, do you think they're going to sell out? And I was like, it's a limited, in terms of store, it's a limited release from Nintendo full of nostalgia. This is prime, like, scalper material here. If there was ever a product to be bought up and sold at double the price, this is one of them. And uh, I'm glad she, she got in before before it was too late. I did not buy one. Because after the euphoria of Direct and Pair wore off, I did just realize, I was like, wait a minute, I could just buy one of the 8-Bitdo controllers. And I did. And uh, Those are really nice. I am tempted to buy the uh, the Game Boy color scheme one that mm-hmm. they have. That's that on one Lightning, is, Deal, that Lightning Deal today, that, that specific really? one was. Yeah, it was Ooh. just a little bit off. I got the Super Famicom one, which I had before. Yeah. This mm-hmm. For the shack, long-time checklisters know this is my second time having one of these controllers, the Pro Controller with the sticks, uh, because I need those color buttons. Super Famicom's where it's at. Yeah. And um, I immediately tested on Splatoon. So for those listeners that may have listened or played Splatoon with this when I got the first one, the reason that I sold it was I think there was either – Something wrong with my controller. I don't know how like counterfeits in this space are like because I know there's a lot of these things that can be sold in China and yeah, Japan. Well, but my know. controller, my first one, when I went to go play in Splatoon, when I jumped into a lobby and it asked me to select my controller, when I selected it using that controller, the whole game would crash. <gasps> and I was like, what is wrong with my controller? So while I could return it for free for Amazon, I did. Um, because I could never get it fixed. I tried contacting the company and they they didn't know. Oh, this happening. is your first one. The first one. Okay. Once I got this one, because I bought this one on Amazon directly from Eight Bitdo. Right. And once I got this one, the first thing I did was do the exact same thing. I popped up Splatoon, went to go play a match, totally played just fine. Okay, good. And uh, I played. I popped up. I think Mario Kart and Zelda, and it played just fine. So obviously, I, I booted up the SNES mm-hmm. online. I played a little. Well, Super Mario World using my my favorite SNES controller and uh, yeah I was played good. Played any of the Super Nintendo games yet? I, I got mine for thirty four dollars and considering it has two sets of triggers and two sticks and you can use it for everything. That's great considering that's way better the than which ones the Nintendo are twenty nine ninety nine a piece. Yeah, they're way better. So I don't know. I'm looking for the Super Famicom ones from Japan. So. Gotta get it. Color buttons. It's where it's at. I don't know it's pretty. America got jacked on that purple off purple concept. <laughs> We did. Bad, bad. Um, but yeah, there is something special. There's always something special to me playing Super Nintendo games with a Super Nintendo controller. Like mm-hmm. it's it's just better. I p- tried playing it with Joy Cons. It was fine. It's just not as good. <laughs> it's just not as good without uh, as as it is with the thing a you Super sent Nintendo me. Controller. The thing you sent me for the Super Famicom one. Yeah, the Super Famicom one is sixty bucks. But the regular Famicom from the NES Famicom runs. Mm-hmm. 
They're $160. I can buy that cheaper on eBay. So what she's That's talking about, is, yeah, is Nintendo Soup, which is a great little blog for anybody out there who wants to follow some news. They have a store where they'll actually like import stuff from Japan for you. $22 shipping? Um, but oh one God. of the things that I was alerted to that they have that they informed me to is in Japan, they have released the Super Smash Bros. Ultimate dock and Joy-Cons as separate purchases. Separate. Yeah. And the FOMO is getting – I kind of want them. After reading all of the stuff with uh, Sakurai and Awada, like it Gosh, had me feeling I it. I was like, oh, my God, I kind of want this dock. Mm-hmm. I kind of want this dock because uh, we've got a question. We'll get into it. But yeah, I kind of want that dock. Um, yeah, it made me cry a little bit. <laughs> Just a little. The Pokemon Company inv- <laughs> unveiled a new Pokemon today. Galar region surfetched. The wild duck Pokemon mm-hmm. in evolution from Farfetch'd is a fighting type that can evolve after many battles and is said to always be noble in battle and chosen as a popular motif for paintings in the Galar region. It I love uses... that this is... Sorry, I just love that this is an evolution and not, like, just a regional variant. <laughs> <laughs> it uses its leak as a lance, and it carries a shield. Uh, my, my whole Cubone analogy basically tossed out the window. And uh, Sir Fetched has an exclusive move called Meteor Assault, which basically just turns into, like, a, a yellow torpedo missile thing. It's exclusive... To Pokemon Sword, so you can't get Surfetched if you're so playing Shield. Benji was talking about getting; he's getting Shield, so I will definitely play Sword then because this is a what? Well, it's I super just, weird I, because he's carrying a lance and a shield, but he's exclusive to Sword. Surfetched, <laughs> yeah, Surfetched, Surfetched. So that leads me to believe that we have another evolution. Oh, of we've got multiple one-off one coming. We've got multiples for Shield. So Patno asks. Which, well, again, one of the questions that came in from our contest. Thank you so much. Potno asks, which Pokemon currently without an evolution would you like to get one? Ooh. Yeah, that. that's the extra thing, without an evolution. So you can't pick your favorite Pokemon. You got to pick one that doesn't have one. That is a good question. Hmm. Let me I think, think the easy it. one for me is to say Genghis Khan. Right. Um... Did you just say Genghis Khan instead of Kangaskhan? Kangaskhan. Okay. It sounded like you said Genghis Khan. I may have, I was drink I was taking a drink, so I may have. <laughs> um, I'm looking. So Pinsir, Taros, Lapras. Lapras That's would be a favorite. good one. That is my favorite water type. Without a doubt, I would Okay, love to okay, so let's take this one. Lapras. So what would your Lapras evolution be? Because Lapras is already would... a big Pokemon and stuff. Like, how do you make Lapras? I think better? I would have it be a baby. And like so, so it evolves down it evolves into Lapras is what I'm saying. Oh, okay, okay. So like so a, you know, like yeah, they added Pichu. Pre-evolution. I got gotcha. you. Pre-evolution. Yeah. Okay. Um, I don't like that as much. Milk is cute. Yeah. Mile. Oh, Spinda. Spinda would be cute to have an Does evolution. It evolve into Splenda. Did you? No. No. <laughs> uh, it's it's a panda that spins. So maybe it's like. Oh gosh. So it's like the evolution of spinning, like corkscrewing. So pan screw. Pan screw? Pan screw. <laughs> that is so Nintendo. <laughs> Absol is another good one. Absol would have a dope evolution. I love Absol. So when I was thinking about this earlier today, here's what I came up with. What if there was an evolution for all of the legendary birds that every bird could evolve into? So like Zapdos... Articuno or Moltres, they all could evolve into this one like super legendary bird. Why? And it had like a piece of every one of them. Maybe. I don't know. That seems kind of like. I don't know. Okay. I was thinking, just thinking like of, like an. Of, I was trying to take like this Entei type of approach, like a Raikou thing, where it kind of had like a. I know. see what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. So aside from like mythicals, there are very few um, mythicals and legendaries. There are very few that have. Kangas Khan has has needed a, a an evolution. For I agree, but do you know of the um, quite a while? Do you know of the theory that? Yeah. Cubones yeah. are basically the babies. Yeah. It would and it would be cool if they would ever like actually make that theory come true. That'd be cool fan service. But I actually think that like so Kangas Khan. Kangas Khan's always a female, right? Yes. Got the pouch. Have the pouch. So I always thought it'd be cool if it evolved or if they introduced like a, a male counterpart. If hmm. you could like Nitto King, Nitto Queen, Kangaskhan. Right. Kind of like so. Gardevoir and um, mm-hmm. 
Gallant. That would be cool. So thank you for the question, Popno. Uh, next on our news list, Dragon Quest Remakes 1, 2, and 3 are dropping on Nintendo Switch on the 27th, which is the same day as Dragon Quest 11, and they each arrive for $5, 9 and $17 respectively. So this Dragon Quest 1 I, is $5, 2 is I 9 I don't need. So we should is, note that these are actually the original Dragon Warrior games, too. These are cool I, because I the they're old ROMs, but they have, like, all updated, like, HD sprites and stuff, which is, mm -hmm. it's... It's both weird and cool. It's like Octopath Traveler meets Dragon Quest. Oh, well, I like that they actually took the initiative to do something instead of just instead slapping of just it on dumping the, the ROM. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. And this is again, this is why, you know, people are all like, "Why don't we have Virtual Console?" This it's is why. To why they didn't do four because there were four on the NES, and they all are kind of linked. Maybe it's coming later. I don't know. Hmm? Interesting. But uh, yeah, this is exactly what I didn't need because everybody was making fun of me in the chat. They're like, you're going to get hooked on Dragon Quest XI and you're going to want to play all of them. And I'm like, yeah, and I have to own them physically too. And cartridges of Dragon Quest games in the beginning are not cheap. We're talking like $90 for a cart. Wow. Crazy. Just because Dragon Quest XI has the whole 2D. I mean, I, I don't think I'll ever buy these, but I don't have the tie to the series like that. So. We'll see how much I love it. I Dragon Quest XI will be the first Dragon Quest game that I've bought and played at launch. Ooh, you're buying it at launch, huh? I played seven on 3DS, but I got it used at like GameStop. I see. You know, so I I, I wasn't like there for the conversation. Mm -hmm. I'll be playing this the day it comes out okay. for sure. Okay, MPD Group analyst Matt Piscatello, one of my favorite Twitter followers, by the way. Um, he mentioned that Fire Emblem Three Houses is to succeed. Awakening is the highest selling game in franchise history by the end of September. He notes already? that because Nintendo doesn't disclose digital sales, but based on their projections, based on rankings and European projections, it likely already has. It likely Yay. already is. Like if you were to count what they think it's sold digitally, it's already bypassed Awakening, but it will bypass Awakening physically alone by the end of the month. That's insane. That's like, insane. I mean, it's only been out since <laughs> the end of July. That's insane. So Fire Emblem Three Houses was the second best-selling video game overall in the U.S. in July, and number four in August. So 60 days after, it was still in the top five, tripling the first three months of any game in Fire Emblem franchise history. So as That's we brought it, as we brought it up before uh, we got the game, we brought up how like what the series has gone through and how great 3DS was for this series. Talk about if you a told me this ten years ago. I'd be like, the heck are you talking about? During 3DS's time um, on older Nintendo Shacks, I believe I kept saying how Fire Emblem has succeeded and it started to enter into that top shelf Nintendo franchise realm. And it's there. For you know, it's sure, it's like, Mario Kart. It's yeah, Zelda games. Yeah. Fire Emblem is up there. It's surpassed. Step down from Zelda and Mario for sure. It's but it's it's more it's more so than Animal Crossing than Luigi's Mansion. It's higher than those games. In terms I agree. Of, in I agree. terms of financial profitability, mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, it'd be very interesting. And I, I'm, I'm very interested to see what what the Fire Emblem franchise looks like on Switch because we waited a while for Three Houses for obvious reasons. They had a lot of upgrades, right. and everything. But on 3DS, smaller system, I understand. But on 3DS, we got three yeah. of them. Three of them, yeah. And they were coming out basically every 18 months. Mm -hmm. So the question is, like, next year, do we have, do we see another Fire Emblem game? I want to see a sequel to Fire Emblem Warriors. There you go. I think they, you can add all of these new characters. I want to see it. a real Fire Emblem Warriors. I want a real right, Fire Emblem right. Warriors. I want to. I would. I would love. Give me Fire Emblem Warriors Awakening, and just retell Awakening using Fire Emblem Warriors stuff. I yes, I buy that and replay it in a heartbeat. You all the same. You can characters. do that with Awakening because you can have all of those characters from the yep. previous games that you can already do in Awakening as cards. Um, man. I'm so glad. That's amazing because awesome. uh, it is. It's like like my third favorite franchise for Nintendo, and probably just in general, behind Zelda and Animal Crossing. And I'm more like Zelda Pokemon, but that third one, it's up for debate. Fire Emblem's probably there. Yeah, I mean, I keep yeah. all my Fire Emblem games. I didn't sell it. I like, <laughs> I still have three houses. Got Steelbook. <laughs> it's right there. So, waifus um, are the way to go, man. Probably, yeah. It's good stuff. Grouchy Sird writes into the show and he asks, do you prefer the current iteration of Fire Emblem, the more personified version, or do you prefer the older approach? I believe, I don't know, man. I have, I, I still am going back to do, I've got to finish Claude's route and then I'm going to do Blue Lions. Uh, but I find myself more itching to do this. Um, 
I think there's a place for both. I think what they can do is, I think we've mentioned this on Shaq before, mm -hmm. uh, is have this be, you know, the main evolution of Fire Emblem games if you want to take the Persona approach and then have like a Fire Emblem classic series where it's more of the just standard maps, sprites, moving around, strategic gameplay. I think there's a realm for both of those things. I think the answer is both. And um, while... <clears throat> I don't want to. I don't want to respond too harshly to our critics, but you know, some folks may not have liked how much time we spent talking about Fire Emblem. Sure. But considering the fact that it's the highest selling in the franchise history and it's an important franchise and all the stuff that's going on, I think that warrants the amount of time that we talked about it. So mm -hmm. um, there's almost like some vindication in seeing that. But in terms of like all of the Persona stuff, the relationships and the fetch quest and the the monastery and the world building, that maybe some older Fire Emblem fans don't like, it has to remain optional. And when people say, I don't like it or I don't want to play it because of this, I think they need to mention that it's optional. You don't have to play it. Sure. You have well, the you calendar. Can skip you can through. skip right by every bit of it. You don't have to do tea with anybody ever. At any point in Fire Emblem Three Houses, mm -hmm. do you have to partake in any of it? You just could just click to the next battle. It is literally, mm -hmm. what, four down clicks on your D-pad. Go yeah. down, 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 A. Done. Now you're on the next battle. Yep. What I think, what I and I agree with you. We talked about that. I would love to see a, a classic something that I think would be so cool. But out. I think the better way of doing this, because I think, I think one thing that we never thought of when we were talking about that before is I think that could fracture or splinter the fans. So, I agree on that. I, I mean, you're never going to make anybody happy. But, we but see I that think with you both can. And Pokemon. I think you can. And here's what I would offer: you keep the 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 story stuff optional. In the actual battle mode, you go Dragon Quest XI, and you allow people to pick and choose. Do you want the 3D anime? Do you want the pixel sprites? And maybe you That's can toggle them back and forth, and you play mm -hmm. it the way you want to play it. I and will say, I did miss the pixelized sprites. I miss the sprites, sprites too. Of this one. And I think it's because of the realism. The Switch doesn't have the power. So it makes it look old. Like, so when I kept talking about the game, doesn't look good. Yeah, like, because it doesn't look modern. Stuff. Whereas. Mm -hmm. When you have like an Octopath Traveler, which used Sprite Look, and it looked amazing because it was on Unreal Engine Four, it was like super crazy. sharp. Mm -hmm. That's what I want from Fire Emblem. Like, let me do both, and I think I think everybody wins in that matter. I, okay, I don't no less both. Yeah, yeah, nobody nobody loses anything there, and everybody's happy. So that's yeah. that would be my answer, and that's kind of uh, a hedge, but um, I love it as much as Awakening is my great. Awakening is the best story. Fates is my favorite. I wouldn't want to go back. I want the, I want them to do more. I want more cutscenes. I want more relationship stuff. I want to take it to another level. Fully voice acted. I want every a bigger time. world. I want NPCs that move around. I want more elaborate quests and things. I want bigger world building, but I don't want to go back to no world. Like that would feel like a. a sure. I think that Just does so much more for the characters. Map. It makes the battles feel like they have more weight and more meaning yeah. because it's not just a two second cutscene, And then you go to the field with these people that you really don't know. Mm -hmm. Cause now I know like Bernadetta, like I, I said it in our little, one of our review chats, like if you mess with Bernadetta, you'd feel the full wrath of my army. Like you don't be messed with my archer, man. It's my girl. Mm -hmm. I would have never felt that way if I didn't go find her book and do like eat dinner with her and help sure. her plant stuff. You know, like if you don't build that relationship, that didn't happen. Yeah. So, yeah, even though Fire Emblem Three Houses is not my favorite, um, I wouldn't want to go back. I wouldn't want to go the other way. I agree. I think there's a, just like, I think the best way for them is to take with what, I mean, obviously with the success of this, they're going to obviously go that route. Yeah, yeah. This is going to keep happening. There's there's no way. Um, it just sold more than anything else. <laughs> so, yeah, this is going to happen. You're going to get a lot more of this. It's been less than two months. What a turnaround for a series. That's I do crazy. think the Warriors spinoff, I would like to see that keep going as a franchise. Like oh, we yeah. talked about All with Let's Warriors Go. Ones. I think the, the mm -hmm. yeah, Fire Emblem, even though Warriors let me down, the, what I said when it was first announced is Fire Emblem fits that well. It's got it characters does. and stuff in, in War, just like Persona does. It's a good fit for the, for the, for the title. Right. So I'm excited for it. Okay. 
Uh, I wanted to highlight uh, some eShop stuff because we've had a lot of games come out. Everybody's playing Astral Chain. Damon X Machina just came out. We're looking forward to Zelda. We've got Dragon Quest XI. You may have forgotten or missed some updates, so I've just pulled a few highlights. Um, Castle Crashers out today, $14.99. Got to get it. I'm super excited to be playing with Ryan over there at Nintendo Nostalgia. I'm going to keep pressuring Caroline into getting it with Brian so we can all play together. Ryan knows, knows what it is. One he of my saw it and he goes, oh, Castle Crashers is coming to Switch. I was like, Castle oh, Crashers is amazing. Got to get it. Got to get it. Um, also out today, as, as you're hearing this, out tomorrow, Grid Autosport, which is getting really good reviews. F- super sim racing game, mm-hmm. realistic graphics, all that good stuff. Yeah. Puzzle Quest The Legend Returns, $15. Um, Devil May Cry 2 out, $20. Too much, but still awesome game. Sayonara Wild Hearts, getting That's their great game. reviews. I saw. Oh, I I'm saw. excited. Totally buying it. $13. Comes out That's technically cheap. on Friday. It's a short game. Um, and I think it's priced reasonably, and it's got great reviews. I think it's it's Metacritic's and all the critics and all the aggregates somewhere in the high 80s, so it's mm-hmm. you know it's right up there. And uh, I particularly read a review I want to say on either Wired or Kotaku where they said it was just like unlike any other gaming experience that you've ever played. Ooh, and that, cool. that that type of stuff gets me really excited. So I'll be playing that after I beat Link's Awakening. Mm-hmm. Untitled Goose Game. I got to get it. I got to get it. It looks so <laughs> ridiculous. I love just like the shenanigans. Do you see like awesome. the Twitter? I would call it memes, but like the Twitter conversation that keeps going around. Like people are jokingly keep saying like, oh, man, I guess Link's Awakening is going to have to wait because Untitled Goose Game comes out. <laughs> the, uh, the creators posted a thing. It said, in honor of our 761st day of originally announcing that this game was coming. <laughs> <laughs> We're showing you the original trailer. I was just like, that's pretty cute. I read that it's coming with a launch discount. Now, it's not currently discounted on the eShop when you see it, but you can't buy it yet. But they, uh, I read an mm-hmm. interview where they said it's going to be $5 off if you buy it like the first 48 hours, the first weekend or something. So that brings mm-hmm. the price down to fourteen ninety nine, which uh, I'll that's be buying. That's probably what it should have been. That's I'll be buying it there. And uh, Nino Kuni Wrath of the White Witch comes out for 50 bucks. I saw the trailer for this, and I can't believe I've never been tipped off to this game but i love miyazaki i love studio ghibli and this is literally playing a miyazaki film like i, it, I the trailer gave me feelings like i is was it level five I, about here yeah because it just got it like is. that yokai look like it just looks you know mm-hmm. yeah, yeah level five gave me fantasy life so i really love level five they're great okay. i can't believe like i i'm obviously picking this up but i just have a million other things to do and this right was now. uh originally like a playstation exclusive right and the and the sequel is a playstation yeah. exclusive. and you guys yeah. think if this sells well maybe they'll bring the sequel over hopefully i've heard a great things about nino kuni too yeah mm-hmm. um out next week star wars jedi knight 2 outcast dead by daylight <gasps> and contra rogue core a contra game <sighs> i wouldn't <sighs> I don't want to just say we so we said mean things about Contra when it was announced. When we first saw it, we we came on check and we said mean things about it. And there were some Contra fans of Discord were like, "Can't believe you just crapped on." it. And then I played it and I said mean things about it again. I want to say more mean things about it, but I feel like I'm being too mean. I want to say I wouldn't buy that game for six ninety nine. And it's calm down. It's calm down. It's like fifty. It's forty dollars. It's thirty nine ninety nine. I know it's crazy. It's insanely too much. Um, Ori, uh, Ori's out next Friday. I well really want course. them to do a physical, but I think I'm going to have to buy it. Like, Got to get it. Right immediately. immediately. It's never going to be physical. Got to get it. So you got to got to get it. It might come physically, but you got to get it. Don't worry about Doubt it. it. Just get it. Uh, Nintendo is hosting the Mario Kart North American Open beginning on the 22nd. It's 150 CC, no computer players, all vehicles, normal items, over 24 races, top eight players, and points wins. I didn't keep reading to figure out what they win. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't know what the prize is. Brownie points. It's cool. You get to say you were the best Mario Kart player in North America. That should be good enough. Man, if you could actually win that, how awesome would that be? Get my ass kicked. That'd, that'd be true. <laughs> that'd be true. Uh, an interesting story that I I, 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 saw, I saw this weeks ago in other territories. I thought it might I be a territory thing. But I didn't even think about it. It's all major territories now. Platinum is pulling Bayonetta 1 and 2 from the Wii U eShop in all territories. There's no reason for Platinum why. They're just pulling it. Um, so this goes back into the long, or I would say the ever growing list of digital versus physical. So I want to know if they are charged for keeping it up. Maybe. And the fact that the Wii U is basically dead 
maybe and they just the wanna... options available in switch that's possible and now, I don't so, know if they get charged for it or not. Yeah, this isn't that big of a deal because both these games are available on Switch. You can buy them mm-hmm. and they play and run better on Switch. But if you're a, if you're a Wii U owner that doesn't have a Switch yet, I mean, and they're also available physically. So if you're a collector, you can still buy physical discs of these games. So if you yep. are a collector and you want to have a Wii U collection, these are two games you might want to put top of your list. Increasingly hard to find. Yeah, so you might want to go ahead and get these sooner one. than later because they're, uh-huh. they're probably going to go up in price here in a bit. Yep. Anyway. That's it for the news. So let's get into uh, some of our Shaq questions. Good Lord, we got a lot of questions. Thank you, children. Direct from you. So let's open it up with Lobster Writer, who writes in, what are your sort of ultimate feelings on the Switch Online thing? What do you mean, ultimate feelings? Like, how, how do you, like, so let me, let me elaborate. I miss Tool console. I think we all do. How, did you play any Super Nintendo games? I have not yet. Um, but I think in terms of, why do we have to pay in order to have an online service? It's because everybody else has been doing it. Nintendo's like, why aren't we capitalizing on this? You know, they finally got with it. Um, I don't care. I owe you, by the way, for our new no, year. No, you don't. I'm not taking yeah. any money from anybody for that. It's So, so <laughs> Lobster Rider, what I would say is it's cheap. It's 20 bucks for an individual. We partake in a family plan. So we have eight people that have Nintendo Switch Online for $35. Which I think roughly comes out to the cut of like three dollars a person or something dumb like that. Yeah. So it's fantastic. So, you know, I don't know. It's hard for me to. There's a great picture that Nintendo tweeted. Um, it's a screen of all of the game covers that you get from being a Nintendo Switch Online member. So they have every NES and SNES game cover all stacked and tiled together. There's like seventy games. So you get to play online. You get Tetris ninety nine. And you get 70 classic games for 20 bucks a year. Kirby, whether you like it or not. Kirby Clash. Yeah, whether you like it or not, it's really, really hard to say that that it's not, like the value uh-huh. isn't there. Nintendo is giving subscribers a really, really good value. So, I mean, I, I can't say too many bad things about it. I'd like to see no. more Tetris 99 type stuff. And not that, I mean, we all want free games, and that's and we're conditioned to do that. Xbox Live, PlayStation Plus, like, we're, mm-hmm. I actually would go a different way. I want more exclusive subscriber content. I want a specific me costume. I want a specific Mario Kart racer helmet. I want a specific, uh, you know, Link's Awakening tunic. I want... You get it in Splatoon. I want, yeah. s- I want specific stuff like that for being a subscriber that you can only get if you're a subscriber. Like, they kind of did it with, like, the spirit board, but I want actual things that, like, matter. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, in Breath of the Wild, when you pre-ordered the the DLC, you got the Nintendo Switch shirt. Yeah. I want stuff like that. Give me stuff like that in every game. You don't have to give me other games. I think that'll be totally be awesome. Yeah. And give me an awesome sword. Or let me, like, let me change the color of Luigi. Like, give me another, like, Luigi pal in Luigi's Mansion. I'm just saying. But something. Something like that would be cool. But what if you could like, what if his overalls are like polka dots or something? Like, just get weird with it. That'd but, be cute. But be cool, you know, like be cool about it. I think that would be fun. I also think taking a page out of Game Pass, which I continue to love, maybe not give away games, but like they did for Mario Tennis, maybe offer demos, demos extended trials. Mm-hmm. Like, hey, you know, or like party up with Fortnite. Like, hey, all Nintendo Switch Online subscribers, you get one free battle pass this year. Hmm. You know, that's not going to kill Fortnite to let you do that. No. Right. And, like, how awesome would that be? You just get one battle pass you can use whenever you want. One voucher for a $15 battle pass for being a subscriber. Do stuff like that. I think that's cool. I want stuff like that. Um, I have other ideas, but it's kind of parlayed into one of these other questions. So I'll, I'll just leave it at that and we'll move on. Okay. <sighs> Kaiju asked this after our show last week, and I hope you guys like that. Um, it's been a while. We used to do more of the review type shows where we just sat down and talked about a game. And mm-hmm. I really enjoyed doing that. It's it's nice to like really be able to give your thoughts yeah. without feeling like you're running over time or on the clock. But we'll pretty much do that next week, won't we? Yeah. Yeah, we will. He asked, Do you think we'll ever see a Nintendo we'll ever see Nintendo publish a game on another system? Um where he was kind of coming from this was Astral Chain, right? It's getting review bombed. 
um, if you haven't been following the news, it was getting review bombed and Metacritic and things like that. Because apparently there is a, a, a vocal minority. I think that's always worth pointing saying that out. It's not majority of people. A vocal minority of people are very upset that this Platinum game that got such high remarks is exclusive to Nintendo Switch and they can't play it anywhere else. So the question was, do you think we'll ever see a Nintendo or a Nintendo publish a game on another system like Astral Chain on a next gen console where no it could be way. prettier, run faster, do bigger and better things? No way. No way. Just no? No. <laughs> ever? It's never going to happen until Nintendo goes completely software. It's never going to happen. I agree with you. But I, I would like to I would like to not agree with you. Like I, I wish we lived in a world I where mean, they were it's just the reality of things. It's so just, Nintendo is very, happens. very tight on on their stuff and that's why their games don't go on sale and things like that. Like their value is their IP, their value isn't their hardware or their services. Yeah. So like for them to put any of their stuff anywhere else is basically giving you no reason to buy into their ecosystem. So mm-hmm. that's how they currently make money. It would have to be a second party type of game, I would think. For right. that to ever happen. But at the same time, like with streaming potentially on the horizon, I think there is a possibility of not putting a game on a system, but allowing users of another system to subscribe to play some of their games on it or something. Like that. I think that's possible. I just think it's going to be like pulling teeth for Nintendo. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I don't think it's going to happen. I think if it was to ever happen, I think mobile would be the place where that would happen first. Um, I don't mm. think it would be on other actual gaming platforms. Right. It'd be very interesting to see if Nintendo would ever take a page out of Xbox's book and maybe start like a PC store. Like I could see Nintendo doing like a launcher where like you don't have to buy a console. You could run their games Just on PC. Just download the, yeah, the XC That or would something. be interesting um, because that could, while I think some Nintendo fans would be like, well, I wouldn't buy a console. I think there'd be way more players that would buy games. So I think that that would offset. Totally. Because I would never... Everybody's got a computer. I would never, but I would never play Mario on my PC. <laughs> mm. I, I, I agree. There's just some things that I refuse to play. Like, I waited for Hat in Time to come to Switch because I didn't want to play it on Steam. But I think there's thousands, tens, hundreds of thousands of PC players that would love to play Nintendo games. And but just they, don't want to buy it. Exactly. Yeah. Um, Soundscape wrote in and he asked, what would you do if you were in charge of saving GameStop? And, uh, I shared some of this around. I think it was actually funny to me because I, I was listening to, um, the Nintendo Guru's video where he's talking about GameStop and, and haters hating GameStop wanting them to close, which I thought was funny, by the way, because if you remember like the Nintendo talk I did with him like three years ago, like, mm-hmm. he made fun of me for being like such a big, like GameStop subscriber. I think he found a new GameStop that he like, can, he we, got can into. we just like mention, by the way, Micah's child was born yesterday. Ah, I didn't know that. Wow. Yeah. That's awesome Little news. baby girl. Her name is Scarlet. Scarlet. Yep. Awesome. I'm going to have to reach out to him and say hi. Yep. Um, so I think he's found a story where he's maybe developed that connection. But um, when he was talking about that, I had shared this link that I had found like a while ago where they was talking about, you know, GameStop's new approach to stores. And uh, did you see that link when I shared no. it on our Discord? So uh-uh. it shows GameStop with like, much smaller wall space for games. So like a lot of games are just kept behind things, but now they're like the, the, and this is an actual store that in like Kansas or something that they're testing it out. They have like a retro station set up with like a table and couches and old TVs. That's Um, what I was going to be talking about. They've got tables where you can play like card games. They talk about hosting week and like weekly events and they start talking about selling, um, not just more collectibles and, and stuff like that, but like snacks. So like cool. you buy like popcorn and drinks and mm-hmm. stuff while you hang out, becoming more of an the experience movies. like the movies. Right. Yeah, that see, that's exactly the way that I was going to talk. Uh, it we went to Myrtle Beach this past June, and there was a retro game store in the mall that had an arcade right next door. And the mall, you know, like all malls, are pretty much deserted. But that was the most popping place in the mall was that arcade. There was somebody at every cabinet. Uh, and while physical games are dying out. They may not want to keep a brick and mortar store for games like that, but obviously, you know, they grabbed up Think Geek. There is a huge following for geek culture. Like, even get with Hot Topic because Hot Topic has become like the go to for geek culture things. I go there for a lot of their t shirts. Uh, they sell a lot of video game stuff. They sell a lot of, uh, you know, Funko like, like GameStop does. So there's, there's a calling for, that sort of exclusive geek stuff. 
I don't think unless they go the retro gaming route and they have like a nice arcade area where you can play these old games or you can uh, meet up and play D&D for one weekend or, or uh, they have Magic the Gathering on Thursday nights. You know, that's there's there's local game stores that do that and are very, you know, they thrive on that kind of stuff. If you're not going brick and mortar and you have to completely close down brick and mortar, they are only going to be able to sell their geek culture stuff on like an Amazon.com site. Like I, I just, if they went the route of just being selling stuff through their website, I think that's the only way they do it if they don't go the retro route. But I, I don't know at this point if they are even going to be able to save any of it. I fear it's gonna gonna go the Toys R Us route at this point. Okay, um, I agree with all of that stuff. I think the the come in and play the games in our store, come hang out, let's do events, competitions, card games, all of that. I think that builds brand loyalty, mm-hmm. and I think that's good. I think that's something that we share with GameStop that most don't. And I think sure, you know, like there are still times I will just take Jack to the GameStop just to go to GameStop. Yeah. We're not looking for anything. We just go because it's got cool collectibles and games, and we go and look uh-huh. at stuff. We look at cards and things like that. We don't even buy anything. We just walk in and say hi. Right. So I think that's good. Ultimately, I don't think GameStop will ever be GameStop or survive or lead the video games purchasing things until they get their online experience and their shipping charges and their oh, their prices in order. And I think that... You can do all of the events and sell all the popcorn and stuff you want, but if if a game is undeniably cheaper online where most people shop, most gamers shop, tech, and, and these are tech-savvy people, mm-hmm. tech-savvy people shop, if they're cheaper, more easily available, more reliably available through other retailers, you will always lose. It doesn't matter that you do trade-ins or anything like that. Like I think uh, with Game Pass and with, with PlayStation Plus and and – and you see these companies, this generation, these publishers, while they, they had to soften the use for, like, use game sales, they've still put a significant dent in that market because now you have to install the game. So you got to mm-hmm. download it anyway. You right. have, they have DLC. They have season passes. They, they, they competitively price their games. So the price is constantly lowering. Yep. And they're all, the, the idea behind all of that is to keep you from trading your game in. To yep. make it so cost adverse to trading it in that you just keep it. Mm-hmm. Uh, and because they're doing that, that's where GameStop is getting hurt. So GameStop right. has got to get better in the new game purchase. They've got to get more in the either, you either do it well, one I or two under- ways. I never understood why they harped on the, you know, they got docked points if they didn't sell X amount of pre-owned games. Yep. You yep. know? I mean, the, I've heard well, horror Well, that's because stories. with the pre-owned stuff, that's all straight profit for them versus when they sell new, they've got to cut right. the, They've got to cut right. everybody else. The problem is they've got to get off the – it's, it's, they've got to change their business model because the used stuff isn't where the money is anymore because right. of all these services and everything that's happening. You know, like how many people are trading in copies of Madden? How many people are buying copies of Madden? I know Madden is still selling well. I'm not trying to say people aren't buying Madden. But you have EA Access now on both where you get 30 right. bucks a year, you get all the EA games. Like, what is the trade-in on Madden? Can't uh-huh. be much. You know, so, like, you're losing all of that. So you've got to change your business model. I think you've got to still offer trade-ins because that, that that customer will always be there. But start being more competitive on the front end. So maybe you lower your trade-in prices, but either you got to do one of two things. Either give incentive for rewards members to pre-order, so, like, discounts, like GCU, something like that. Right. Or you give more rewards points for pre-ordering at full price. But let's say every, let's say, you know, like I think of like the Wii U digital deluxe promotion. Every game you pre-order at $60, you get a $5 coupon that you can spend in our store, you know? And if you buy 10 games a year, that's a significant amount of money. And that's a free game, yeah. you know? So like, another, I think another thing, you know, God, it was um, Xenoblade. Hearing that a game was exclusive to GameStop, period. They need to pay for exclusivity. I think, you know, when you have those kinds of games that are coming out and you can you can only buy them at GameStop, guys. You can't buy them on Amazon. You can't buy them on Walmart.com. Only at GameStop. Um, they just need to be a little bit more assertive and willing to put up the money for that. It's going to make me pe- pe- make people angry, but, I mean, 
I kind of admire exclusivity. It makes it more desirable. That's just me. Uh, but what she said about the shipping charges, I should not be paying $10 shipping for a $15 Amiibo. They make it hard. And even just their online experience, like their customer service, their their account system, their management system, they make it hard to shop there online. Like it's hard to do that when mm-hmm. I can literally go to Amazon and click a button and I have it. And it's there and it's there on yeah. time. Most of the time it's there the same day, the day it's supposed to be. It's right. free. I don't pay anything else. Most of the time I save money. Like mm-hmm. Walmart, everything's $10 off. Like yeah. you've got to do something. Um, because what they're doing, and I, re- I realize that in the brick and mortar space, they might even be losing money. But because they're losing money, they're putting you out of business. So you've mm-hmm. got to make a move to stay in business. You've got to take a hit to stay in yeah. business because right now they're just kind of slowly bleeding you dry. Emerging, yep. Yep, you got to stop it. Um, so I don't know. I think that'll always be there. It sucks. Like I, I, as somebody who's always enjoyed going to GameStop and has a lot of good memories there, I hate it, like going the route of Toys R Us. I really do. But I, I just don't see, like, unless they completely scrap everything and rebuild from ground up, there's no way they're going to save it. And man, for years I've wanted them to either buy Gamefly or start their own rental service or do something like that. Rental service would be good. Because they've got the the merchandise to to make that a thing. If you could Mm -hmm. check out games, you know, instead of renting things from Gamefly, if you could rent it from GameStop and go pick up a game for the night or Mm -hmm. the weekend or a week. And I think they could price it in a way that that makes sense. Maybe they do a subscription. Like I would subscribe to game. I would give GameStop twenty bucks a month if I could rent a game out one at a time. Mm-hmm. Because unlike GameFly, I could go to the store and choose the game that I want. <laughs> like right. you know, I wouldn't have to wait for a queue and wait for them to send me whatever. And you know, like mm-hmm. I could actually go and physically pick up the game. Right. I would do that. Um, it would require them to upgrade their customer service to a whole other level. You know. Yep. But but, but I think that could do something for them. So. I don't know. Sure, that's a route. Um, we've got so many questions. I'm going to save a few for next week because we're already like basically over time, even though we don't have a time limit. We're over an hour. Um, so let's just end here with TJ's question. Uh, simply, he asks us, how well do you think the Nintendo Switch Lite will sell? <sighs> Pretty well. I've seen like a lot of, you know, reviews that are already coming in on it. And I'm getting envy. I really want the turquoise one really bad. Um, and I saw the size comparison that you posted of the regular Joy-Con with the Switch Lite. And I mean, it just, it's compacted and they got rid of the extra space at the bottom that I guess was holding the rumble feature. And it just, it looks sleek. It looks good. Uh, like I said, I'm holding out hope that Animal Crossing gets an exclusive. That, you don't have Animal to hope Crossing for that. One. You know that's happening. <sighs> it has how many, to. How many, no, how many Animal Crossing 3DS designs were there? Like six? I don't know about that. If you count faceplates and stuff? Yeah, if you count faceplates. There's at least like two systems. There was like one that was exclusive to Europe and then there's sets. one that was all around. Yeah. Yeah, and there's like two there's like ten different sets of faceplates. Like they're yeah. that's totally happening. You have different color buttons and it's gonna be white and like teal or green or turquoise or something. That's totally Island gonna themed. happen. Yes. Yeah. Totally gonna happen. So yeah, I'm holding out for then. I don't know if I'm gonna be able to make it because Brian and I are still fighting over Switch, sort of. He's like, I'm playing Fire Emblem. I'm like, I'm about to play something else. Yeah, you need another Switch. I know I do. And it's only it's only one ninety nine. I know. So I'm gonna wait. The Nintendo Switch launches this Friday mm-hmm. um, with Link's Awakening in the the different colors, except for the Pokemon edition, which I am holding out for. So I will not be getting a Switch Lite until October. Mm-hmm. We will be getting the Pokemon edition for Jack, and uh, I think the Nintendo Switch Lite. It sounds crazy for me to say that I think it could outsell the Switch. Switch is almost forty million. I don't think it, like I don't think it can, but I think it it might. Like I think there's a chance it could. It, I, ex- I, I expect it to at least probably do like twenty. Its biggest clientele is going to be Japan because they are big on carrying their stuff everywhere. Sure. Um, everybody had a 3ds. Everybody had a DS. So I think they're going to be going the route of. For, I, I just I I don't know. It seems like. It's a Japanese friendly solution at this point. The size and the price is the reason why I bring it up. I mean, just the price alone, one ninety nine. That's the entry price. Like mm-hmm. the switch is still expensive. Was it still three forty nine? New two forty nine. 
No, it's, it's never been three forty nine. <laughs> it's been two ninety nine. Two ninety nine. That's what I was thinking. Well, it went it's... down to two forty nine at one point, I think, and then it's... they came out with a new one. Yeah, it's two ninety nine ninety nine for the thirty two gig model at Best Buy. Three hundred is a lot. Three hundred is a lot for a tablet and all that. Like that feels like a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, it felt like a lot when it launched. I remember even that launch. I was like, wow, because it's a portable. It's a three hundred dollar portable. It's not a console. You know, so like technically Did we speaking, knew the same. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> um, I was used to it. But one ninety nine gets you squarely in that good tablet. You know, how right. many kids right. get a device of some sort that's two hundred bucks? You know, for Christmas every year, mm-hmm. that puts it squarely in that in that right price sure. range. Knowing that Pokemon is on the horizon, knowing that next year we'll likely get another Pokemon, <laughs> knowing that mm-hmm. the year after that there'll probably be another Pokemon. Sure. So, I, like my estimates, I'm thinking over like a three year span. Um, I, and you know, we'll get an animal crossing design. We'll get a breath of the wild two design. Eventually they'll start like, you know, making like, I expect actually like this will be the push, Uh you know, this will be the push. People will double dip on these. Like they already are. It's going to happen for me. I expect the switch light to, yeah, I expect the switch light to probably add at least 20 million units to switches overall total. At least in the next two to three years, I would expect that because of the price range, it'll sell quick, it'll sell fast. Because I think of, maybe even more than that, for, because of pack-ins and special edition consoles, it'll keep the momentum going. And I think more people, I think people that aren't Nintendo players, like PlayStation, Xbox players, I think they might mm-hmm. find their way over because of the cheaper price point. You know, eventually, give it two years, they'll start coming down. We'll start having these sales and bundles and stuff like that too. Yeah, yeah, so. I expect the Nintendo Switch, Switch Lite to do very, very well. It does look, I mean, we've said it a bunch. I don't want to, like, regurgitate all the things we've said about it. But it it's a really nice piece of technology. It has a great, really solid, one-piece design. It looks good. It's got the contrast, the white sticks and everything. It, it's sleek. It's it, pretty. The box is going to look well. Like, the box is going to look great on the shelf. Like, it's going to mm-hmm. attract eyes. I, I, I believe that. That's not because I'm a Nintendo fan. I think if you think about all the consoles and what they look like and you put the them on the wall... Are- the it's switch like, light stands out. It's like it, candy, you yeah, know. Yeah, it grabs I mean, attention. I th- expect it to sell well, and especially this holiday, it's oh, basically yeah. vacant. <laughs> like the switch light is the new thing, and uh-huh. it's the only new thing out there. There's nothing else. True. Um, and then you know we don't know what the future looks like for Stadia or XCloud. I mean, I keep bringing it up on our Stadia podcast. If anyone, if any streaming service can get a hold of a switch. I think they have a significant leg up. <laughs> they will have right, a significant right. user base. Sure. Um, so, you know, like that that might enhance sales down the road two years from now. I don't I don't know. It's crazy. Yeah. So, TJ, I think it's going to sell incredibly well. I think it'll be hard to find for uh, the foreseeable future, like until Black Friday. I think um, they'll sell quick. Mm-hmm. I think they'll sell fast. And uh, I think they'll, uh, you know, if you're looking for a specific, like that Pokemon edition, I pre-ordered it because I don't know how, I don't know how available that thing's going to be that weekend. <laughs> I don't know if you're going to be able to go fire, find it. Though. It looks so good. It does look good. Like the buttons, the offsetting colors, it looks really, really good. And I like that. Um, we're going to do one more because this is an easy one. Chalfie <laughs> asks, how many Joy-Cons is too many Joy-Cons? <laughs> Did you hear Pear the other day when he was on here? He owns them all. I have too many Joy-Cons. <laughs> you're going to tell Pear that he owns too many? Uh, I own the gray pair, neon pink, red, yellow, green and blue so i have owned six pairs of joy cons i have and i plan on getting orange and purple i have a custom pair i have the white pair i have the highlighter yellow pair i have the mario red pair i have the pokemon let's go pair i'm so jealous you have the like i have the the good ones that i I want (laughs) i got the good ones (laughs) they need to make the new like just plain blue they need to make that a set because i think i want the halloween ones but i'm i'm not going to spend my coupon on them i want them i just don't want them at 80. When I can I get the Halloween get ones them. at like 60, I will get them. I will only get them when they announce their counterparts. And you know what and I really reason. want? I really just want purple ones. I don't even want the orange ones. Well, that's I really know. what I want. I want purple ones. I want to buy a left and a right purple, purple joy. And orange looks so good, though. Yeah, I do want the Halloween ones. Um, and as I mentioned, as much as I made fun of it because the right Joy-Con just has one little small line across it. Japan releasing these. I, I, I can't tell you how much time I've spent on oh, eBay God. looking at these prices. Looking for the Smash Joy Cons. I want the Smash Joy Con in dock set. It's the whole thing. It's not any one of them individually, but that dock face is incredible. Yeah, the face is nice. The face is nice. It's but... incredible. And 
like, we have a question asking us about Smash in the future, which we're not going to get to tonight. But like, considering how landmark of a release that Smash Ultimate is, and how much it keeps going, and how many people talking about, it, and the characters that might still be to come, it kind of makes me want it more. I'm like, this might be the Smash of all Smash. Like, if you were going to collect something for Smash, this is the one to do it with. I kind of want okay, the dock. I get in the FOMO. So I'm getting the FOMO. I want the dock and Joy Cons. I, I I don't know why. I think it was talking to pair. It's a plus and a line. And the but they look great on the system. They just don't look great alone. If you picture them by he, themselves, they look ridiculous. But if you put them together, those, they then. look good. He owns them. I know. And he has that's to. I think talking to pair is like got me wanting. He, he bought he pre ordered the Disney version just so he can get the polka dotted zoom zoom controls, dude. I got the I FOMO. Mean, I got the FOMO. I'm telling you, at least limit your FOMO to fifteen dollars. It's worth it. Mm. I want that dock. I'm getting that dock. That's going to happen. I don't it's know if I ever get rat. the Joy-Cons, but I'm getting the dock. I'm getting that dock. The dock looks awesome. It's not the same thing. Caroline, listen to you. I know. Of, of all the things you buy, you're trying to tell me to, to not to get a wrap? No, I want the dock. The dock looks incredible. All right. Anyway, I got one final thing to say. I don't think Kevin has brought this up at all this month, the September to remember. Um, but, you know, every month we do a patron giveaway. So all you have to do is subscribe to the Patreon. One dollar, you get the DLC, you get Arcadia, you get all the other things. Um, um, but we do a giveaway, and we throw like games in, and we give cards, and we've done our PSVG polos. This month we have a new announcement to add to the PSVG Patron Club. And uh, for those that are watching the live show or watching on YouTube a later date, I'll go ahead and show it to you before I tell the audio listeners what it is um, but we have that this neat fire. slick psvg hat Dude, as you can it, see it, with it's the a lot PSVG. bigger on the front face than i thought it would be mm -hmm. and uh i'm gonna it's throw out. one of these into the patron uh box this month so if you would like a cool psvg hat um, we'll throw that in there. We already have the polo. We've got like four or five games that nobody ever takes, and we've got coupons and gift cards and things like that. But you get the DLC show that drops that we're recording next weekend. I'm going to tell my my dad's uh, the the story of my dad's funeral. Um, so we're when are we recording that next week? Next Friday. Yeah. So we're going to have fun with that. And uh, like I said, Arcadia, Kevin Hates Everything. You get a lot of extra podcasts. If you've never given us a chance over there at the Patreon, there's like – you're missing out on like five, six, seven exclusive audio things a month, at yeah. least. Plus, DLC is usually two hours of uh, ridiculous and vulgarity and hilariousness, and uh, so drunkenness. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you get you can get one of these sporty hats. So there you go. Uh, that'll do it for our show this month. Caroline, do you have anything to say before we sign off here? I do not. I will see you guys Friday though, or today if you're listening, and it's Friday over on my stream. There you go. And uh, next week is all about Zelda Shack Life 100. Can you believe it? 100 episodes of the Nintendo Shack podcast. I'm so excited. Triple digits. Triple digits. It's a big, big monumentous uh, occasion, but that's not really our, 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 we have, a, it's all about Zelda next week. It's almost like we planned it like 100 yeah. weeks ago uh, yeah. to have a Zelda release on our 100th episode. It's pretty cool. We have a special Zelda guest coming to talk Zelda. Ew. And um, Caroline will be telling us all the reason why she loves Link's Awakening for the second time. And I'm very interested because this has been like my, my first time ever playing the game. So I don't have any of the nostalgia that all of you have. So I don't know if that's a good or a bad thing. Like that could make there's me a lot. not fair, like the a, game. <laughs> there's a lot I've forgotten. I last played it when I was on, I bought, I downloaded it on 3DS and I think I played it back in 2013 or something. Cool. It's a great game though. That'll be next week, and then the week after that, we'll have a special episode for you guys as we close out our September to Remember. So I hope you guys enjoy it. Thank you for listening, as always, and we will see you next week, Kooplings. Bye!